Good evening. Um, today I'm going to tell you another story about Fergie. You seem to like hearing about him. Um, but it's going to be a bit different today because I, this is the only photograph I have of him. And I've just had this idea. I've taken a photograph with my phone of this and I've enlarged it. I've enlarged it from that to this. It's not very clear, but it almost seeing that, well, it, it made me, I felt very emotional. I mean, I, you know, you forget what people look like, don't you? But I can see him there. Just, and it, the memory, you know, came back of what he looked like. He was a tough old sod. Um, I'm going to try and draw him from that. I'm going to try and make a drawing of him while I tell you this latest story. I've got to turn this round again now. To my drawing board. So yeah, we'll um, get straight into it. I don't know if it's going to work, <laughs> but I'm going to have. A... Oh, see, I've. I just had a piece of charcoal and now I've lost it. Here's another piece. <coughs> yeah, so I hope you can see this all right. I'm going to draw Fergie while I tell you a story. Let me just check it again. I'll do that like that. A little bit more round. I hope you'll be able to see that. Let's hope this um, picture stays where I want it to stay. So, this is, um, I can't see his eyes very well. A bit roomy, his eyes, I think. Uh, as I say, this might not work. Let's give it a go. It's exciting. Uh, we'll go there. Fergie, yeah, so, um, it was 1964, I'm 16 years old, I think, let's see, 1964, I was born in 1940, 57, yeah, 16. Um, and I've just completed my training for the uh, Merchant Navy. It has been 12 weeks training, 12 weeks of absolute hell. No, I make that 10 weeks. The last couple of weeks were pretty easy going. Actually, come to think of it, um, the last month wasn't that bad either. Or indeed, to be honest, the last couple of months, the first four weeks now, that was, um, that was hard going. Um, this is difficult, this is very difficult talking trying to tell you the story and draw it at the same time. Anyway, yeah, so the uh, the old Merchant Navy, it was hard going and um, a lot of the lads couldn't make it. A lot of them didn't even make the first, through the first day. That's how difficult it was. I mean, they, they really, they just wanted to go home to their mummies after the first day's training. 
<laughs> I don't know how they ever expected to live a life at sea and they couldn't be away from home for a couple of days. Anyway, yeah, so it was hard going, but I got through it. And um, yeah, I passed. I passed with flying colours and here I am now. I had become a fully qualified cabin boy. I was on about the pub with the ship's cat. Um, I better stop and see. See if you can see this. Not very clear, is it? I'll try and keep going. Yeah, so, um, anyway, I, um, I'd gone to see Fergie, who, um, I don't know if you remember, he used, to, he was my mum's boyfriend, erstwhile boyfriend, whatever erstwhile means, or maybe not erstwhile, he was, he was always there, she was married about, I can't remember if it was five or six times, and, uh, Fergie was always there between marriages, I have to say. She wasn't uh, she wasn't unfaithful to any well, I don't know any, I don't know about that. But uh, yeah. But he was always there when it all came crashing down and uh looked after her. Um she loved him. I'm sure she loved him. Let me just show you this um this photograph. It's got writing, that's my mum's writing. There's a photograph. That's that's the range with the saucepans on. He's just after finishing his dinner when I took this snap. So yeah, mum took that snap, Fergie. That's in the Nissan hut. I think I showed you the painting I did of that. It's a strange old life, but um, when they were together, you know, they seemed happy enough. Just couldn't couldn't maintain the happiness at all times, and that's the story of my life as well. Although I think I've come to grips with things now. Yeah. So Fergie, he's decided now, now that I'm a qualified merchant navy man, that um, I should have an earring. Well, I'm all for it. I mean, uh, you know. In those days, it wasn't a fashion statement. It meant it meant something. Um, and Fergie, you know, being a trawlerman, it was a common practice amongst the trawlermen. Um, some people said it was because um, people had it in their ear because they were deaf. Um, but Fergie had it in for money, money reasons, and. Um, yeah, so, so him and his friend, American Alex, are there and they've decided they're going to pierce my ear, my ears and put these um, earrings in. So, um, uh, I'm not keen on it, not keen to have it done, but... Um, I think I make what's quite a sensible decision not to argue about it with two um, drunken trawlermen, <laughs> which is what they were at that time. Um, yeah, so it's Fergie and American Alex. American Alex wasn't really um, American, but he um, his hero was John Wayne and um, American Alex spoke with a an American accent. Um, yeah, a bit of a fantasist. The only difference was that he was, uh, he was actually bigger than John Wayne. He was a bloody great big bloke. Nice enough. But, you know, Fergie and his mates, they were a tough lot. Uh, yeah, so that was American Alex. The, these earrings that... Fergie's got me are pure gold. I think I'll get a bit closer. 
yeah, pure golden, quite heavy. And um, the reason he's given them for me is because he says when I when I come home from sea and I get pissed, drunk, chase women and things. If I've got my earring in, I'll always have my fair home. That was the thinking behind it. It's your fair home. Your fair back home. Yeah, so basically what it means is I come ashore with my wages. I can spend all my money on wine, women and song. And then when I need to get a train or whatever, I'm, I can just cash in my earring. And that's why I had the earring. So, um, yeah, brilliant idea. So, um, I agree, sort of reluctantly, I think I agree. Anyway, American Alex is designated the job of holding my head down, holding my head still on the table while, I, uh, while the piercing takes place. Um, Fergie, has got a great big needle. Um, it's a canvas sewing needle. And um, he dips it in some whiskey. <laughs> he dips it in his, his jar of whiskey, his, his glass of whiskey. And, um, oh, sorry, I'm trying to concentrate on this drawing. His glass of whiskey, that's to disinfect it. But then he takes his hanky, <laughs> bloody great, dirty hanky out of his pocket and wipes the needle dry. So it sort of negates the um, disinfectant bit. Then American Alex holds my head down on the table. Fergie gets this old potato, muddy, mud included, rams it behind my ear. And he says, now just hold tight. I say, <laughs> I say, um, will it hurt me? Ow, ow, he bloody well started. Oh, I, I swear, get off, get off me, you bastard. And uh, words to that effect, that bloody hurt. Um, anyway, I'm struggling now. I don't want the other one done. American Alex is... As big as he is, he can't hold me, and I get the hell out of there. And uh, I rush outside, and I hold my bleeding ear under the cold tap to ease it. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I can hear Fergie shout. He shouts out, "What about the other ear?" And I can remember saying, you can stick your earring up your ass. <laughs> I can hear them both in the hut laughing fit to burst. And uh, anyway, eventually I get this one earring. I allow this one earring in. Uh, a week later, I report to my first ship. Um, it's a big old tanker and I report to the bosun and he says, the bosun says to me, you can take that fucking thing out of your ear. There's no girls on my ship. And uh, that was the end of that earring. Sorry about the bad language. It's, um, it was part of the curriculum at the sea training school. Well, at least I think it was. They used enough of it. Anyway, that's that little story. I'll try and carry on with this. Are you still staying with me? <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Fergie. Dear old Fergie. Yeah. It was American Alex I was going to tell you about yesterday when, when I was talking about the uh, prison term in... Um, in Craig Inches when I was reminded in custody where he came to my rescue one day but I'll leave that story for another time
and I'll try and see what I can do. Blimey, I'm, I think it's actually beginning to look a bit like him. I'll just concentrate a bit. His hair was down like that. His hair was always untidy. He was always um, unshaven. Not like that. Those were the days. Um, they were tough times, but there was, you know, there were good times as well to it all. I put Fergie earring in there. Looks a bit of a rogue, doesn't he? That's what he was. I could, um, I could work on this and get it, get it better. But um, I just wanted to make a different kind of video, to be honest. Okay, sitting in the Nissan hut. Mum's made him a cup of tea. He's smoking a roll up, roll up cigarette. Um, pretty soon he'll get out of the chair and he'll go outside and get some firewood because it's this um, Nissan hut was at a, a wood yard. Burns the same sort of wood that I burn here in my, in my. Uh, wood burning stove. Yeah, and you'll get the wood burner roaring away and they'll be cosy. And he'll have a glass or two of whiskey. That's wrong. And there you go. I'll leave it at that. Um, I'll see if I can get closer up for you. If I can get this out of here. <laughs> oh, poor old Fergie, I've made your face a bit squat. Can't leave you like that, mate.
the uh, camera's making it look narrower than it actually is. Gosh, I'm supposed to be an artist. That's terrible. Um, hold on, bear with me. See what that'll do. Better leave you to it now, Fergie. I'm ruining your good looks. Thanks for looking by. I hope you've enjoyed that other story about Fergie. And uh, I did my best with the portrait, but it's very difficult to concentrate telling a story and doing drawing. But, uh, that's my excuse out of the way. Thanks for looking in. Please subscribe if you've enjoyed. Next time I do a drawing, I'll have it a bit better prepared. This is completely off the cuff. Take care. Bye bye.